Alright, welcome back to uh, Meat Tasters, part three of the Hierophant Meadery series, where we're tasting uh, Hierophant Meadery's meads. Uh, we had six of them, and this is part three. We're on our last two, and uh, this mead has been awesome. We've really enjoyed it. High quality stuff, and uh, these last two are no exception. And uh, we probably, probably one of these, uh, of this last two that we're going to uh, taste are probably our we've said probably our favorite yeah um so. they, they have a wide array of uh methaglins and uh they really hit the gamut uh, i i i've enjoyed uh all of them they're they're quite different uh and uh all so far have been very well balanced uh i think you, you can almost picture the circumstances where you would uh would find them to be in their uh, uh their prime as far as when you would want to have it uh you know and, and no exception with these last two so and uh, again, for all of you who are uh, checking this video out, haven't seen the first two, go back and see those. But uh, this is uh, Mark Zambron, certified BJCP beer and me judge. That's with me tasting today. So uh, again, we're on our last two. And the first one we're going to taste for this session is the hopped meat. Right, uh, hopped, just named hopped, and it's a 12% ABV, right. kind of, you know, wine style, like, uh, at that, that strength. Um, and uh, do you wanna go ahead and, uh, do we need to pour? Oh, we've got them poured already, right? Okay. That's our, it's our first of this, uh, this, this part. So, uh, yeah, hopped mead, it, it makes you think, well, they must have added it for uh, uh, components that are going to make it uh, interesting from the aroma standpoint, perhaps with uh, 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 you know hop aromas, but also it may add some bitterness. Uh, and uh, meads typically we don't look for too much bitterness to balance out the sweetness. The the acidity and tannins are typically used more so, but bitterness can be used and is in beer. It's uh, it, it's the most commonly used balancing feature. Uh, in beer for uh, uh, sweetness you get from malt. In meads, typically the honey is balanced uh, uh, in, in methaglins with uh, both acidity and tannins. Uh, so a bittering balance should add a, a fourth component to this one. Uh, and so we'll see. But it is a, again, a very clear, uh, nearly brilliant uh, mead. It has a, a, a darker straw color to it. Uh, it's a still mead, so it has uh, no real bubbles to perceive except with the pour. Uh, it's very uh, re very reflective and has, again, a nice meniscus and uh, some legs to go with it, too. So and it does recede after a swirl. Let me just ask you, for people who don't know what a, the meniscus is, mm -hmm. can you just explain that real quick? Sure. If you tilt the glass uh, at about a 45 degree angle or so away from you, you'll see the rim of uh, the surface as it uh, touches the glass. And when you're looking at it, uh, if, if you notice that there is a, a uniformity in color, it really thins out uh, the, the layer of the mead. So you can look at it as it, it comes to its very thinnest point across the glass. If it has a uniform color to it, in which it almost appears completely clear, uh, that, that's indicative of a mead that hasn't had any significant oxidation or any kind of uh, haze to it from either particulate matter or contamination. Uh, when a mead gets really old or if it's, it's, it's exposed to a lot of oxygen, you can actually get like a browning or at least a tan discoloration kind of on the sides of the meniscus. Uh, and uh, we don't see that here. You see that the meniscus is, is quite uh, 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 homogeneous across the, the glass and uh, it's clear as it, as it approaches its very edge. So, Absolutely. that's a meniscus. All right, well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the aroma. Mm -hmm. So th this aroma, of, uh, you know, you're, you're expecting hops and uh, the, the hop aroma we're getting from this is, is a, a tropical fruit um, almost like a, a melon plus a little bit of citrus. So I, I'm getting, a, if I had to say the mixture, it strikes me as sort of a cantaloupe um, mixed with a, a clementine orange in the aroma and a little bit of a light grassy honey. But again, that doesn't really stand out much. You can tell there's honey 
just from your nose, but it's not a prominent feature uh, on the nose. So. And I think the flavor follows. It, it, it uh, again, has a, a fairly, uh, I'd say, a medium degree of, of mm -hmm. cantaloupe and uh, maybe a medium-low degree of, uh, of, uh, of uh, clementine-type citrus note. It um, has some mild grassy honey sweetness to it. Yeah. And there is bitterness. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not by any means at the level of like an IPA bitterness. It, it's no. it's more subdued than that. Uh, like I would a say, pale yeah, pale ale perhaps. Um, but it it it, um, it plays very well with the degree of sweetness. And this is a of the ones we've tried so far today. This is a little bit more. On the sweet side, I'd say the finish is slightly sweet. Um, it does have light tannins and light acidity too, but I think the bitterness uh, balances the degree of sweetness nicely. So it, uh, it, it, uh, it, they play together nicely. Agreed. I think um, this would be a good uh, mead to introduce to beer beer aficionados that uh, have never had mead before, or, or maybe yeah. have had mead that bad mead you know that they're like no no i'm not sure. interested in mead this yeah. might bring them around Th this might be for the hop head uh, amongst mead drinkers <laughs> or or someone that you're trying to kind of sway say come to this side of uh <laughs> of, of the fermented beverages and see what you think uh yeah definitely i think uh the 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 hop uh choice uh, it, it, it's one of those n uh, new world hops uh i i think and it, it it's uh, it's pretty evident in the aroma and the flavor too, and the the bitterness is not overwhelming. Again, I think it's just enough to come into balance with the degree of sweetness. So, well played. Yes, and I'll say that off the website they said it's a gold medal, and that we have another gold medal, mm -hmm. mead uh, in the, the Mead Free or Die International Mead Competition in 2015. Uh, they it also won a silver medal for Methaglin Dry in the Mazer Cup. Uh, international of 2016 competition. Uh, they they describe it as our hop mead possesses two editions of three types of hops, which add balance to the sweetness of traditional honey wine with grounded base notes and a sturdy aroma that entices the senses. Uh, mosaic hops anchor mm -hmm. a fruit forward hop blend with guava lime and grapefruit grapefruit flavors combined with the usual resinous hop flavor. And that's that lines up with everything yeah. you had to say. So, right. uh, again, well done. Uh, pretty to look at in the glass. Delicious to taste. And uh, highly recommended once again, and especially yeah. for uh, beer people and your beer friends. Yeah, and Mosaic is a coveted hop. Uh, it's, it's found its way into a lot of uh, uh, IPAs, uh, double IPAs, um, pale ales. Uh, it, it's and certainly the the latest trend of New England IPAs. Um, you know this is uh, a hop that that you'll find frequently now on tap in in, in a lot of different microbreweries. So it's yep. flavorful. All right, we're gonna take a break and then we'll come back for our next one. All right, and we're back with our last and final mead from Hierophant Meadery. And this one is quite the doozy in a good way, and it's called Song of the Elders. Yeah, this one, uh, on, on first glance, it, it's not, uh, not as, uh, as clear as the, uh, the previous samplings we've had. Um, you know, I would say it does have a slight haze. Um, and so you think, oh, well, haze, I wonder what, what's going on with this mead. Um, there, there are very fine bubbles, uh, again, sort of near our meniscus, even when I tilt it, uh, it, it is a, I believe this one was carbonated, so it, that's expected. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it it doesn't have the reflectance either, you know, it's a little bit dulling when you look at the surface and the light, and I think that uh, goes along with some of the haziness. And it makes you wonder, well, what's going on here? And then you uh, bring it close to your nose, <laughs> and like, wow! That's, that's uh, anyone who's gone uh, skiing through uh, pine trees or fir trees, you're, you're going to be like, wow, this is just like that ski trip I had uh, two weeks ago. 
and it really is because it just smells just like I took my, my family skiing and, and, and we went through a few trails that had, uh, you know, we were lined with pine trees. Th this reminds me of that perfectly. Uh, and, and then our nose is tied in a lot with our memory banks in our brain. And uh, this really does evoke uh, uh, memories of uh, 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 anywhere where you're out in the forested area where there are evergreens or pine trees or fir trees. So it, it's just amazing how you get this, this rather high amount of pine in the nose. Yeah, it, clearly they were, they're fond memories for you. That it was oh, yeah. it was immediate. It was immediate. That's it. It, it took you there right away. Yeah, and, and there's some background cardamom. I think it's yeah. uh, on the label there too. But mm -hmm. it is, it's evident on the nose. There's not any real alcohol heat. Um, yeah, so I should have read the label to you. It's um, it's a carbonated mead with red cedar, Douglas fir, pine resin, white pepper, and cardamom. Added at 8.5% ABV. Mm -hmm. So not quite a session. Um, well, for some people it would be considered a session, a session but uh, <laughs> not generally session strength, a little bit stronger than that, but not quite wine strength. So yeah. somewhere in the middle. The, the, the flavors, too, are the same way. It's a, it's a piney, piney and resiny, um, a little bit of cardamom. Uh, towards the end of the taste, sort of the aftertaste, you get a bit of pepper, um, maybe just a twinge of alcohol, uh, but it's a pleasant uh, finish, I would say. It, it, it finishes, um, uh, 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 again, slightly sweet. It's, it's not, uh, this is not dry. Um, it may have it finished dry as far as it fermented out completely, but it's, um, uh, I think that pine is, is just intense enough to make it, it it taste sweet my brain says sweet slightly yeah. not a lot just slightly sweet. it's definitely pine intense um but not in an overpowering way in a very very pleasant way mm -hmm. um i you know you get it the whole way from from on the nose uh at, at, up front but it really for me on the back end during the finish it pops and that mm -hmm. there's that that sweetness like you said on the finish um it's not sweet sweet it's a you know a little sweet mm -hmm. And it just makes everything come together on the finish just perfectly for me. I just, I, right. it's like, it's highly impressive. Yeah. And I, I get the sense that the pepper and the cedar are there. And when it warms up a bit, it's almost like way at the base of my tongue. Just, just as an aftertaste or an afterthought, uh, I get um, a little bit of cedar with the the pepper it's probably playing that note uh, towards the very end and only when it warms up i think the 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 really uh the 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 note that is most uh, uh impressive is just how much pine and uh for without overdoing it i mean i think right. it, I, this is I, I think i mentioned it's my favorite <laughs> yeah yeah I, I like this one i uh i agree i agree and um it's tough because i think they're all excellent um I love them all. Uh, honestly, I really, I really did. Um, but this is, mm -hmm. it's just so different. It's so different. And, um, I've never had pine, uh, in, in a, in a mead before. Uh, so this is my first pine mead and, um, it just mm -hmm. really impresses me. Right. Yeah. But it, we were, we had, again, chatted a little uh, off camera about, uh, the I, you know, New England IPAs and how they're hazy. And this one here, a little bit hazy, but I'm sure, that if they uh, there were filtering or anything else involved, it might have stripped some of the flavors out, and you, you don't want to take away flavor uh, just to make it look beautiful. Exactly. Uh, and I, I think this is something that uh, you, you know once you've sipped the first sip, you'll realize that uh, you don't want to mess with the flavor. <laughs> you want to keep right. it in there. Right. And it's you know it's common um, practice nowadays for session meads, or uh, you know this is kind of close to a session mead mm -hmm. strength, so. Um, session meads are, are often hazy. It's acceptable. It's, uh, it's something that just people don't worry too much about in the regular world. Um, but in the competition world, it might cause a problem. Uh, but, but we would gladly, uh, take the haze for the flavor. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, any day, any day. Yeah, so, it's a, um, it's worth the trade-off, I'll say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So.
All right, well, that is it. That's the last, uh, the number six out of six of the Hierophant Meadery uh, meads that we have. And um, uh, I just, uh, overall, what would you say? Uh, I just want to thank you for sharing this uh, Meadery's work. It's, uh, I think they have a, a great assortment of methaglins. Uh, I think you wanted me to talk a little about, about what a methaglin is uh, briefly, uh, too, and I, I can certainly do so. It, it's it's a, a mead, like any other, that has one or more uh, spices in it. And uh, many would say that uh, the, it even includes, if you add other things to it, like fruit or whatnot, uh, if, if spicing is the primary aspect of the mead that, uh, that's adding some twist to the, the, the honey component, uh, I would call that a methaglin. And um, uh, it's, uh, it's really any kind of botanical, any kind of spice that you add in quantities enough to perceive them. So if you perceive uh, the, the spice that's advertised, it, it's a methaglin. Uh, you can add uh, spices to other things, again, melamils, fruited meads, uh, to change the flavor profile, and it may just play a supportive role, uh, and you can still call it a melamil in that circumstance. But a methaglin is one where you're really advertising, and uh, your, your meat should exemplify the, the, the spice that you've added, or spices, if used in combination. Um, and I, I think uh, they've done a wonderful job with spicing. Uh, I, I would uh, guess that they have plenty of experience in, in going back and, and changing the, the, the quantity of spice to achieve a great balance between the honey sweetness uh, and flavors, uh, the aromas, and the spice itself. Uh, it's also difficult too because the age of the mead uh, can influence how much of the spice character is exhibited in the mead and it seems like all of these samples have been uh, at their prime. Uh, not a one has been really out of balance at all. Uh, so very impressive. Uh, I think these are, are great examples. Um, I would say I would recommend if you're if you're going to uh, uh, delve into the realm of methaglins, either making them or consuming them, uh, theirs is a meter you might want to give a shot and, and say, yeah, these are prime examples. They're awesome. I agree. I agree. And uh, the way you can do that is uh, go to hierophantsmeadery.com and you know have the link. Uh, post it up there for you but uh, yeah definitely check them out at least look at their list of meads you might see some other ones that also interest you that you want to try and I know they also have a mead club as well but uh, other than that that's it for us uh, look for the podcast interview I'm going to be doing with Jeremy and his wife Michelle uh, to give you kind of a little more uh, background on them and the meadery and as well as we're gonna I'm gonna ask them some questions about these meads specifically and hopefully get some uh, some answers some insight into their mead making processes so mm -hmm. um, so yeah so uh, thanks again for hanging with us and checking us out and until next time cheers cheers, cheers.